Hello, Matthews. Gatos here. Welcome to 9.2, Solving Quadratic Inequalities in One Variable Algebraically. Before we begin that, I want to review how to solve it graphically. So since this is a review question, I want you to pause the video, try it on your own, and then come back to get some feedback on your answer. So first thing that I want to do is isolate my inequality on one side. Since x squared is negative, I always want my leading coefficient to be positive. So I'm going to add x squared to both sides. So x squared minus 3x minus 10 less than 0. If you want to write it so that all the variables are on the left, you can do that. Just make sure your inequality lines up. So I look at the graph because I want to see the direction of the opening and the x-intercepts. So it is a quadratic that opens up with x-intercepts at negative 2 and 5. So because I'm looking at where it is less than 0, I'm looking for areas where it is below but not on the x-axis. So it doesn't include the x-intercepts. If we look at this graph here, here is where it is below. So it is below the x-axis in between the x-intercepts, but not including the x-intercepts. So my solution will be negative 2 less than x less than 5. Now, what if you didn't isolate to make your inequality positive? What if you wanted to keep the leading coefficient as negative? Would you get the same answer? Let's check. So let's say you wanted to keep negative x squared there. I would add 3x, add 10 to both sides. And it now would be greater than 0. So let's look at my graph. So it should have the same x-intercepts, but this graph opens down. So between, um, we have negative 2 and 5, but between those two is where it is greater than 0. So I don't include the x-intercepts, but you can see my solution here is still in between the x-intercepts. It's just on the other one, it was below, but on this one, it is above. So we end up with the same solution. Okay, let's look at how to solve these algebraically. So first thing we're gonna do is set the inequality to zero so that the leading coefficient is positive. We wanna do that because we are going to find the x-intercepts. Now that could be with factoring or the quadratic formula, but we're not using our graphing calculator. Once we've found our x-intercepts, we're going to label three intervals. We'll put our small x-intercept here, our big one here, and here's my intervals x is less than the small, in between the small and the big, or greater than the big. So before you even figure out what your x-intercepts are, I want you to set up your intervals. This is a number line, but really it's just an algebraic representation of the x-axis. So now that you have that set up, you're just going to look at is the leading coefficient positive or is it negative? If it's positive, I know it opens up and I can kind of superimpose the graph on my number line. If the leading coefficient is negative, I know it opens down, and I can also superimpose just to help me figure out my solution. Remember that we have to pay attention to whether the x-intercepts are included in the solution. So remember, greater than or less than don't include, but greater than or equal to, less than or equal to do include the x-intercepts. So let's try an example. So the very first thing I want to do is set my quadratic equal to zero to find my x-intercepts. And I see this factor, so I'm going to do it by factoring. Okay, so I factored it, now I'm gonna set each factor to zero. So two x plus one can equal zero, which means x is negative a half, or x minus four can equal zero, which means x is equal to four. So let's put those on our number line. So this is my x-axis. The small one, negative a half, goes in these purple places. The bigger one goes in the blue places. So putting that on my number line, it looks like this. Now notice my original inequality did not include the x-intercepts, neither does this one. So since it's greater than zero, greater than zero is above the x-axis. So I'm looking, where would this graph be above the x-axis? Well, the leading coefficient is positive, so I know it is a graph that opens up. So it's going to be something just like this. So we're only doing this to get an idea of where it's above or below. Since I'm looking for above, I can see that the solution is my two outside arms. 
So since I've already labeled them, I know those are my solutions. I don't need to write them out again. So x less than negative a half or x greater than 4. Now, I can check that on the calculator just to see if I'm greater than 4, am I actually positive? If I'm less than negative a half, am I actually positive? So you can see here, greater than 4, for example, 5, it's positive. Less than negative a half, say negative 1, it's positive. And look, it's negative in between. So we know we did that correctly. Okay, so I want you guys to try this one. Pause the video, do it, come back and get some immediate feedback. So the very first thing I'm going to do is find my x-intercepts. So I have negative 2x squared plus 5x equals negative 6. So I'm going to set it to 0, but I want my leading coefficient to be positive. So I will add 2x squared, subtract 5x, minus 6 equals to 0. So looking at that, I can see this one here does not factor. So I have to go to the quadratic formula to come up with my answer for my x-intercepts. So x is equal to opposite b plus or minus square root of b squared minus 4a and c, all divided by 2a. So this is 5 plus or minus, so this is 25, and then negative 4 times 1 times negative 6, positive 24, and that will all be over 4. So I have x is equal to 5 plus or minus the root of 25 plus this is 49 over 4. Okay, and looking at this, I realize I substituted in a for 2, not 1. So I substituted it in for a 1, it should be a 2. So let's back up the bus here and replace it with a 2 negative 6. Okay, so let's try this again. So 4 times 2 is 8, and 8 times 6 is 48. Two negatives make a positive. So not 49. Square root of 73. Okay, so now that I've corrected that, I have two x-intercepts, 5 plus root 73 and 5 minus root 73, both over 4. So the 5 minus will be the smaller, the 5 plus will be the bigger. So let's label that on our graph, on our number line here. So there are my x-intercepts. So again, the smaller 5 minus root 73 over 4 and the larger 5 plus root 73 over 4. Okay, so I see that it is a parabola the way I've done it that opens up because my positive leading coefficient. So I just superimpose it. So there it is going through the x-intercepts and opening up. So since we were looking for where it is less than, so if I put it back up here, I put x squared on the other side. So I had a 0 here less than 2x squared minus 5x minus 6. So you can see reading it, it is less than 0. So I'm looking for places where it is below the x-axis. So that's my in-between piece. So I know my solution here will be in between. So what I'm going to do is figure out what 5 minus root 73 over 4 is, and plus, approximately, so I can look on my graphing calculator to see if I did it correctly. So I know approximately it's negative 0.9 and 3.4, and we said that it was the in-between notation. So let's look in-between. So in-between here would be, for example, 0, and you can see it's negative below, up to, say, at 3, it's still negative. These ones here, they are positive, so the outside arms are positive. So that tells me we did that correctly. Okay, let's try another one here. So hints on the intervals. The outsides are always going to match, okay? So just to kind of put it all together, the outsides will always match because I have a parabola that opens up or down. So let's say if I was testing for above the x-axis where it is positive, it is my outside pieces. So for my outside pieces, that's the two separate inequalities with an or sign. If I was testing below where it's negative, it is going to be the in-between notation. Now let's say we're testing for negative. 
So here, we're testing for negative. So we have a graph that opens down like this, and the in-between piece is positive, the outside pieces are negative. So if we were testing above where it was positive, it would be the in-between notation. If we are testing for negative, it would be the outside two pieces. So that's really all it is when it comes to doing these algebraically. Now, there's a little special case that might happen from time to time where you look at the intervals and it's all above the x-axis or all below the x-axis. So in these cases, I would not have an x-intercept. So no x-intercept. If you reach that, you have no x-intercept, you have to do a test just to see if it's positive or negative. So I would recommend plugging in zero. That's a nice easy one, just to test if it's above or below. So let's say we got positive, 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 and we're testing for above. Well, it's always positive, so it's going to be x is an element of the reals. Let's say I have positive, 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 and I'm testing for below. Well, it's never below, so there's no solution. In the next one, let's say I have all negatives. If I'm testing for above, since they're all negative, there is no solution because they're all below. And if I'm testing for below, they're always below. So those are the four different types of scenarios that you might see solving these algebraically. So I just want to end with a word problem and look at a special case of word problems having their own unique restrictions. So let's try this. We have an object is launched 19.6 meters per second from a 58.8 meter tall platform. They give us the equation of the object being launched as being S of T is negative 4.9 T squared plus 19.6 T plus 58.8. We want to find how long the object is in the air. So it's in the air when y is positive. So I'm definitely testing for positive. So I want to find my x-intercepts and I want to find them algebraically. So what I'm going to do is set this equal to zero. So I have zero equals negative 4.9 t squared plus 19.6 t plus 58.8. So I am just going to use the quadratic formula. I don't want to monkey around seeing how this factors. So x equals opposite b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4 times a times c all divided by 2a. Okay, so we've got negative 19.6 plus or minus. Now I'm going to work this whole thing out on my calculator. So I'm going to do 19.6 take away 4 times negative 4.9 times 58.8 and I get 1172.08 there we go all over negative 9.8 so let's figure out our two solutions. So in my first solution, I'm going to do negative 19.6 plus the square root of 1172.08 and then divide that by negative 9.8. So I get x is equal to negative 1.5. Let's do that one again for negative 19.6 minus the square root of 1172.08 and that will be divided by negative 9.8. So I get 5.5. Okay, so I'm not having the most awesome day with quadratic formula. I couldn't figure out why my answer wasn't working out because I did not square B. Okay, so let's go back and try it again. So we have x is equal to, and I'm just going to actually work it out for each one. So I'm going to have negative 19.6 plus or minus the square root of, this time I'm going to square it. I'm going to own quadratic formula, negative 4.9 times 58.8. Okay, so plus or minus 1,536.64 and divided by negative 9.8. Okay, let's fingers crossed. Hope this works. So negative 19.6 plus the square root of 1536.64 divided by negative 19 9.8 x equals negative 2. Ooh, that feels a lot better. 
So now I'm going to go and subtract. Negative 19.6, subtract the square root of 1536.64, divided by negative 9.8, and I get 6. Okay, couldn't figure out my mistake. I'm sure that's happened to all of us. Uh, maybe not twice in a video, but all of us. Okay, so let's put it together on our number line. Now we're testing for positive. This is a quadratic that opens down. So looking at this here, the way that we graphed it, we're looking for where it's above, but it is a quadratic that opens down. So let's superimpose that on our graph. So it does not, it, they want to know how long it's in the air. So it definitely doesn't include the x-intercepts because that's when it's landed. So something like this. Okay, so you would say that the solution is this. Now, if it was just an equation, that would totally be the solution. But because this is a word problem, we can't have negative time. So what we have to do is change this. So from being negative to less than x, less than 6, we have to actually change it to a 0. So this is an example of a word problem where we have to change our domain restriction. So that would be the answer. Okay, I want to know how many people can relate to this. My need for sleep is greater than or less than my need to go to school. I really like what the little mouse says. How many people have that issue every time they wake up in the morning? I know I do. Should I stay or should I go? Sometimes I want to sleep forever. Okay, you guys can do practice questions four to seven, then move on to your textbook questions. I hope this video helped and I look forward to seeing you for the next one.